Hello, and welcome to another episode of Through the Monocle. Today, we will be reviewing Martin Scorsese's The Aviator from 2004. As always, I'm your host, Grant Ingram, and approximately two hours and 49 minutes and 48 seconds into this review, or into this recording, rather, I am rather excited to reintroduce my compadre, the Noah Dietrich, to my Howard Hughes. It is my good friend and uh, occasional collaborator, Grant Skillen. How are you doing, Grant? I'm doing good. We are th almost three hours into recording. My MacBook is almost dead, so it is once again sitting up on a mason jar so that when I look at my laptop screen, it looks somewhat normal. You know, in um, true uh, in true Howard Hughes fashion, I hope that mason jar is full of pee. It is full of nothing, although it was full of M and M's, and there is a story behind that that we can I, maybe get in at some point. I would love to hear it. Yeah. Um, fair warning. I was I just got word my roommate is having people over, and when I asked him to keep it down, he said I'll try. So if he doesn't, I'll start telling stories. But um, <laughs> if if you hear something, that's why. Um, anyway. Grant, this is your first time seeing this masterpiece, correct? That is correct, yes. And what are your opinions on it? It's a very good movie. Um, I think you have the uh, Rotten Tomatoes. If you want to go ahead and throw that up on the screen real quick. I absolutely do. Um, it's an 8679, which is kind of weird for me. Yeah, it I think low. the the 79 is for Charlo. The 86, I would say, is probably in a good range for it, although probably on the low end in my uh Opinion, yeah, I would but, say it's about a 92, 93 in my book. Yeah, but I mean, if someone said, oh, it's like an 86, I'm like, okay, I can see that. I mean, yeah, it's just one of those. 79 again, it seems seems kind of low. It's very well written. Um, you can tell that he put a good bit of effort into making it authentic to the times. Um, like, it's, it's very well done. The acting is very good. DiCaprio is amazing. Um, Kate Blanche is good. The others are good as well. Um, I mean, those two in particular, in my opinion, but I mean, overall, it's a very good movie. Yeah, I 100% I agree. I think DiCaprio probably should have won an Oscar for this. Like, I don't know who won the Oscar in 04. I'm about to, to find out. Uh, uh, but I think he should have won it just for that last probably hour. Um, because he was just so good at being crazy. Sean, mm -hmm. Sean Penn won Best Actor in 2004 for Mystic River. Mm -hmm. uh, which, I, I've never seen Mystic River. But come on, man. This is such a good movie. Um, I think Kate Blanchett deserved her Oscar. I'm just gonna gonna go out on a limb there and say she was okay in the movie. Yeah, um, just just okay. Just okay. Um, I'm trying to think. I wish we gotten to see more of her. I guess that could maybe be a complete. I know it's realistic, so I know that they're not gonna bend that. But she was so good that I wouldn't have complained if there was more of her. Yeah, but in order to have more of her, she'd have to be around more later in Howard's life, and maybe she was, but we also don't see a lot of late Howard, right? Like, the movie goes, starts when he's big, mm -hmm. and works its way up through when he goes crazy, but then ends on kind of a redemption note, right? And then he starts to go crazy again, and we, we lose it. Like, we don't get to old Howard Hughes by, like, his late 70s, because he lived a long time. Um, he was like full, full blown crazy to the best of my memory. Mm. Like, where we saw him start to lose it, he lost it. He died in 76 at the age of 71. Mm. Um, yeah, during his lifetime, he was one of the most influential and richest people in the world. Um, but by his late life, he had, a, he had like a medical institute that is currently located in Chevy Chase, Maryland. <laughs> <laughs> because of course um of course um so yeah, he there's, was there's... widely considered eccentric and suffered from severe ocd um howard always ate the same thing for dinner a new york strip steak cooked medium rare dinner salad and peas but only the smaller ones pushing the larger ones aside 
Um, he lived his later years in Las Vegas. Um, autobiography. He had like some sort of hoax going on with that. He died in on April 5th, 1976 on a, on board an aircraft owned by Robert Graff and piloted by Roger Sutton and Jeff Abrams. He was on a route from his penthouse at the Acapulco Princess Hotel, now the Fairmont Acapulco Princess in Mexico, to the Methodist Hospital in Houston. Um, his reclusiveness and drug and potentially his drug use made him practically unrecognizable. His hair, beard, fingernails, and toenails were long. And his six foot four frame now barely weighed 90 pounds. Mm. The FBI had to use fingerprints to identify him. Like he had fallen quickly. So we saw the great years of his life before all the mental decline. Yeah, and we got to see a picture of the mental decline, but it didn't it didn't go to the end, which in a way is like almost respectful to him because in some ways he couldn't control it. And so it's trying to paint some of the better parts of his lives while sh- like his life while showing some of the struggles as well. Yeah, exactly. Like he he couldn't, I mean, OCD, mental disorder in general is just I mean, it's sad. Mm-hmm. It's not like he could do anything about it, though the drugs probably didn't help. Um, but like as I I mean, I think I even said it during the movie, he got kicked in the butt a lot. Mm-hmm. Uh yeah. Catherine Hepburn left him. Then he fell out of the sky. Uh then he got cheated on again and he fell out of the sky again. Like he kept falling out of the sky. But like I don't know. He's just an interesting person. And the movie, it almost is like a mercy killing, right? Where we don't see him late in his life to yeah. kind of save that face. Yeah, and you were talking about the OCD and uh, in preparing for the role, Leo spent some time with an OCD patient named Edward who just advised him on like some different aspects of the condition, particularly about the repeating sentences. So that's that's a theme that pops up. You mentioned you can. it's a little bit early in the movie, but as you go on, it's, it's pretty prominent, like when he's locked in the room. Mm-hmm. And then at the very end of the movie, of course, um, when he's repeating sentences, that is uh, one of the things that they had talked about and went over. No, that is that is a big part of OCD, and you do notice it early on. Um, I think it's something like, I need to see that real, I need that real, or something like that. And like it, it's very minor, but it's a cool little touch that they threw in. Now, DiCaprio yeah, spent a, a day with Jane Russell to hear her memories and impressions of Howard Hughes. She was very impressed with DiCaprio's visit and told him that Hughes was a quiet yet extremely stubborn man who always got his way in the end. Um, there's a lot of work that went into prepping for this. Yeah, for sure. Um, Kate Blanchett did a lot. I think you mentioned a little bit, unless I'm just thinking back to the... Um, she did a ton of, of work to get ready for it. Yeah. Uh, Scors- Scorsese requested that she watch the first 15 movies of Catherine Hepburn to learn her mannerisms and her poise. And you mentioned during the uh, watch along that in preparation for her role, she learned to play tennis and golf and to take cold showers <laughs> because Hepburn was never that. I can't imagine doing that. And she's got like that, that New York accent, right? Where it's like that. I, I say it's New York. I don't really know what it is, but like, it's an old radio broadcasty kind of voice. So like, if you yeah. ever played Cuphead before every boss fight, Who's ready for a high class bout? And it's that same kind of, it's like that bigger, it's more nasally and it just kind of punches you yeah. right in the throat. It's all yeah, in Darwin. IMDb, yeah. IMDb says that it was a distinctive upper class New Englander accent. So New York. Mm-hmm. Upper class. Um, she, did, she did daily voice exercises with a voice coach who she had worked with before and she studied her movies to learn about her mannerisms like, like I mentioned earlier. Yeah, um, Kate Blanchett's a mentioned as well actress. the freckles, uh, mm-hmm. like she had her freckles hand painted on. Yeah, um, and, and she, also she a fantastic you, actress in general. Yeah, yeah, and as you mentioned, she won an Oscar for this, and so she is the first person to win an Oscar for playing a real life Oscar winner, which is crazy. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, and she's just fantastic in it. Like I do wish she'd been in more, but I like that she came back towards the end. Yeah, you got a little bit of her, but sorry, it is uh, ten twenty as we are recording this mm-hmm. currently. And um, we've been doing this for three hours, so kind of a little bit of slack. Yeah, 
And go check out the other two hours and 50 something minutes of it. It's fantastic. Um, I forgot exactly what we were talking about. <laughs> uh, Hepburn coming back in the end. The last thing you said was you see a little bit of her. Yeah, you see a little bit of her, but and again, it's like I understand it's realistic, so it's it's like you can't just bring her back just because you want to. But it would have been cool to see her again. It would have been. I do like that she more. got replaced with Ava Gardner. Like we saw Ava Gardner before. Mm-hmm. And then they kind of replaced her with with Gardner, which I guess is what happened in real life. But like she took over that motherly kind of, especially once Hughes went crazy, it, it became a motherly figure. Um, and there's a lot of a parallel between that of, I guess I would say either Hughes's mother or the nanny, right? In the opening and closing scenes where he's spelling quarantine and Ava Gardner giving him that same standing bath. Yeah. It's just- Fun fact. This was the first Scorsese directed movie to gross over a hundred million in the U.S. I wonder what the budget was. That's a good question. Uh, Grant also mentioned this during the watch along, so I'm just stealing everything that he ever said. Um, but Scorsese spent five hundred thousand of his own money on this mm-hmm. movie uh, when Warner's cut budget. I think you said it was because of The Departed. Was it going to be a franchise? To, yeah, they wanted a franchise. He didn't, so they're like, hey, "Screw you, money." And so he ended up putting five hundred thousand dollars in. Um, the budget of this movie was one hundred and ten million. It made two hundred and thirteen, which I think is kind of cool. Mm-hmm. Jane Lynch was um, filmed a couple scenes as Amelia Earhart, but they were cut from the movie. I wonder why they were cut from the movie. Like, I wonder if there's something else you can, like, if there's a way you can see those, because that's just fascinating. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. It's such a good film. Like, it, it does a good job of setting him up as, like, this enigmatic mogul mm-hmm. from the beginning. So, like, once he starts to go crazy, you really feel bad about him. Because even if you, like, I've seen the movie five times or more. I don't, I don't know exactly. It's one of my all-time favorites. I own it on Blu-ray. Like, I see the movie a lot. Um, you notice things in the second and third watches that you don't in the first one. So like, for example, the fact that he repeats himself early on in the movie, like there are always these hints of it, but it does such a good job of showing you this strong, powerful figure that when he does start to lose his mind, you really feel bad for the guy. Yeah. And I'm not going to lie. It was amazing to watch him kick that center's like rear end. It was, yeah. And Grant was joking about it, but he goes from peeing in jars to peeing on a senator. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And uh, um, Alan Alda did a fantastic job in this. Did he Did he win the Oscar? Did he just get nominated for it? I think, I can't remember. Um, I know the movie won five Oscars, and I know Blanchett got one. So let's see. Did Alda... Alda got nominated... DiCaprio got nominated. It got nominated for Best Picture. It won Best Actress for Blanchett. It won Best Cinematography. It won Best Film Editing. And it won Best Art Direction. And it also won Best Costume Design. Which it should have because they spent $2 million on the costumes. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah, that's crazy. Uh, Another fact. This is the only Scorsese and DiCaprio movie to be rated PG-13. Really? Like for like both of them, like a movie with was Shutter Island rated R. I'm just reading the IMDb fact. No, I I believe it, but like Shutter Island is. Oh, this I guess it was rated R. Shutter Island is fantastic and is also woefully underrated. We probably should have talked about it too. It's so good, but like this is just one I had to talk about. Um, yeah, and I mentioned it during the uh, the watch along, but this is my favorite of the Scorsese movies that we've watched this month. And this might come out. This might come out next Tuesday. It might come out on on almost on October. It might come out on Halloween. It might come out the first day of November. We'll figure that out. But um, this month with Scorsese movies, this was my favorite. Um, it kept me engaged for the whole almost three hours, which I was not expecting. If I'm being honest, I thought I'd be zoned out, but I knew you'd like it. I, I knew it would keep you engaged. It is just one of those mm-hmm. movies. 
This yeah. was this used to be my comfort watching. Like I would just turn it on. I love, especially the early scenes where like everything's turquoise. I love it. Hmm. Like when we first meet Hepburn and they're playing golf. Like that's one of my favorite scenes. The scene with Ludlow, where <laughs> where he's like, "What the heck is he doing here?" <laughs> Meeting her ex-husband is fantastic. Like, I, there's a lot of this movie that is just comforting to me. So I figured you'd like it. Now, with that said, what what is your like rankings of the four you've seen? This is one. Just be, because of style, I'd probably put Hugo too. Okay. Uh, and this is just this is just personal preference. Like, obviously. Goodfellas and The Departed are very good movies. It's just not necessarily for me. Yeah. After no. that, you're not getting any hate from me for for saying that, right? Mm-hmm. Like it's different than C plus in Tombstone. Like to say it's not for me is like a legitimate thing. I get it. Hmm. Um, I might get hate for this. I think I would put The Departed third and Goodfellas fourth. Fair enough. Hey, dude, The Departed got Scorsese his first directorial Oscar. Like Jack Nicholson is what did it for me. Oh, dude, I love Jack Nicholson in that movie. Um, yeah, I I can't say I disagree with much of that. <laughs> for me, it's like picking children. I, I think The Aviator is also my favorite of the four. Uh, it's definitely the one I've seen the most. I. I Again, it's comfort watching. I can throw it on with family in the house. Like, it's not like it's a good movie. Um, after that, it's probably. I mean, when we, when I say, when I'm going to pick the bottom of this, it's the bottom of like four amazing movies. Um, yeah. And, and like I said, the two of the movies this month aren't really for me. It, it is different than Tubes to Four. I, that was a little different. I know I'm getting hate for that. Because yeah. even my mom is bad at me for that one, but um, <laughs> where she has been for for years since the first one, and, <laughs> still getting coal in his stocking at Christmas just because. Yes, yeah, uh, absolutely. Um, but I can recognize while these movies aren't for me, I can see the the appeal to people who like this style. For sure. Right. So I think for me, it's The Aviator. It's probably Goodfellas, then The Departed, then Hugo. I it's with saying that I absolutely love Hugo. Like love mm-hmm. it. it. It's a really good movie, and it would. I, I don't know where it would rank. I love that movie, but I, I think the other ones are better. Though I do think Hugo is more rewatchable than The Departed because by the third time you've seen The Departed, the twists don't have the shock value. Yeah. Um. So maybe. And, maybe and, and I do think The Departeds were a little excessive at the end, still, <laughs> but um. <laughs> But there definitely is the shock value because you're you're like okay they're gonna stop dying at some point and they just don't they just keep dying. <laughs> it just and doesn't stop so you can see why Warner Brothers cut the funding on the Aviator because Scorsese refused to leave either uh, Damon or DiCaprio alive mm-hmm. but it's like I don't know how you really make a sequel to The Departed there is no good franchise other than for money which I mean fair enough Warner Brothers for wanting the money out of it you can't blame them. But yeah, exactly. I think we can both agree, though. Scorsese is one heck of a filmmaker, Mm -hmm, for sure. And you can see the range between Hugo and this one, and then The Departed and Goodfellas. You can see the range of the Ma movie to this, with DiCaprio going insane and everything, and. And he makes other stuff that also fits in between that. And had I been smart and not just attracted to the big flashy ones, I probably would have picked like maybe Age of Innocence or something like that. But I think I still feel like you get a good range, right? Yeah, Hugo is a kid's movie. Yeah. But it's fantastic. Like he, no matter what he's making, he brings that same level of quality and that same commitment to the story. And I love that. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I think next month we said we were doing Tarantino, right? I think so. Yeah, you're going to... Those movies, I, I don't know whether they'll be for you or not for you. They're... Depends on the ones we watch, I guess. They're usually more violent, but they're almost so hyper-stylized. Like, they, they lose their, like, impact, right? 
Mm. Like it's kind of, um, it almost becomes cartoonish. I, I don't know. We'll see. Um, we'll figure out which ones we're going to watch. There are some of them. That, there are some of them that aren't that violent. I guess you will have to stay to find out. I guess you will. Um, yeah. So thank you so much for watching that. This might be the longest review out of this month. Uh, five minutes. Has it? I feel like it's yeah. been maybe 20, maybe. It's still been a while for us anyway. But uh, yeah, I don't really have anything else to say. I think the movie's fantastic. I think it probably should have won Best Picture, but I was barely alive in 2004. So yeah, knows? I don't know what beat it. It's possible something beat it. I'm like, oh yeah, that makes sense. Uh, let's see. What did it lose to? Um, because that would be a good thing to know. Cars. <laughs> um, I'm trying to think. I don't. I'm not good with movies, especially when you get that old. Yeah, exactly. Um, when I was one year old. Right. Heck, if I know. <laughs> Best motion not picture. That I can even tell you the years of most movies, but four. Two thousand four, it lost to. I'm going to give an instant did, reaction. Did a hotel? Ro- Wait, what? Oh, that's Golden Globe. That's not the Oscar. I'm stupid. It won Best Picture for the uh, Golden Globes. 2004. I am so confused. Is this also not? Ah, it's BAFTA. That gummit. I can't pick. It won the BAFTA. Why did my Microsoft Edge just freeze? Can you still hear me? Yes. Cool. Uh, because I can't do anything. Woohoo. Um, oh, I'm back. I'm trying to figure out what the heck it lost to. Dang it. Um, Was it too, would it have been 2004 or would it have been 2005? 2004. Uh, let's see. Oh, I can't. There's no link to click on. Because what award did Blanchett win for it? Best Supporting Actress. Yeah, so it wouldn't have been 04 then. Okay. Because it was Renee Zellweger for something else. Or maybe it was Best Actress. Whatever she won it for. Um, Let's see. 2004. It's, it's yeah, no. Million Dollar Baby won 2004. It's 2005. Well, The Aviator was nominated in 2004, so it was Million Dollar Baby. Well, she won her actress in a supporting role for The Aviator in 2005. Yeah, but it was the 2004 Oscars, so it was the 77th. No, I'm looking at the 2005 Grant, Oscars, and that's when she won her award. Grant, the 2005 Oscar nominees were Crash, Brokeback Mountain, Capote, Good Night and Good Luck, and Munich. Good Night and Good Luck is fantastic. For- for- the 2004 Oscar nominees were Million Dollar Baby, The Aviator, Finding Neverland, Ray, and Sideways. In 2005, it won the Oscar for Cinematography. So I think the Oscars are the year before. So it might have won the Oscar in 05, but it won it for 04. Well, yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm, okay. I'm trying to find. Okay, well, it, it lost to Million Dollar Baby. Um which I mean, fair enough, I guess. I don't know. I've yeah, never million, seen million Dollar, dollar baby. baby. I've yeah. never seen Million Dollar Baby. Perhaps I should have. And I mean, more power to Clint Eastwood. But darn, this was a good movie. Anyway, if you've enjoyed this and you want to hear Grant and I argue again at the end of shows about movies we we both enjoy, you can go to patreon.com slash the culture nerd and you can uh, pay us. And we appreciate that. There are ways to pay everybody or just us or just anybody but us. No matter what you do, it really does help keep the lights on. It really does help keep me yelling at Grant. It is fantastic. Thank you so much. Grant loves doing that. As always, I've been your host, Grant Ingram. And I have been your co-host, Grant Skillen. Thank you to each of our Patreon supporters. Thank you to Jose for the logo and Taylor for the intro. And thank you, the viewer, for joining us. It's been a long three-hour and 15-minute journey. If you've been here the whole time, first off, we salute you. Um, Secondly... Please leave a like, subscribe. It really does help us out. You can also scan that QR code there on the left. Just pull out your phone, scan it. It's going to take you to the Culture Nerd. You can scan the QR code there on the right. It's going to take you to our other show where you can hear us talk to some cool people. More cool people on the way, by the way. We've got some fun stuff announcing. And 
tune. Tune in next week where we talk about Quentin Tarantino's films. I'm not sure which one we're starting with, but we will figure that out. Be here or be square. Um, yeah. Anyway, thank you so much for joining us, and we will catch you next week.